Amen. Thank Pastor E for praying for us and for those who are in need. I want to, um, first of all, thank you guys. I don't know if you all know that how much I appreciate each of you um, just for being here. Um, I thank you all for hanging with us on Wednesdays, on Sundays, you know, on Mondays, on Saturdays when we have prayer. I thank you all for supporting us with your presence. And uh, sometimes that is taken for granted that a person's presence will always be there. Um, we, we, we take those that are closest to us sometimes for granted. Um, we just believe that um, they'll always be there until we look up one day and they're gone, you know, unexpectedly or expectedly. I don't want you to take for granted anyone's presence today. Amen. Uh, so tell them today, tell them that you love them, tell them that you appreciate them, tell them what they mean to you. And I want to tell you guys that you all mean the world to us. And we thank you for being a part of our bridge family, uh, both internal and extended and I just wanted to get that out there I hope you all had a wonderful Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day or me time day whatever it was for you <laughs> whatever it was for you I hope you enjoyed it my bonnet is coming down um but um hold on we just gonna do this gonna take it to the back like that there we go all right that's the way we fix that <laughs> all right but I hope that you all uh, enjoyed yourselves I hope that you were reminded of how special and loved and appreciated and needed that you are and if you weren't I want to let you know that I love you that God loves you and that you are uh, important to him so much to the point that he has your name written in his hand and so I hope you all had a wonderful wonderful day so let's get right into this lesson especially because we were having um, some technical difficulties are we still having technical difficulties okay all right, so let's go ahead and get into it. As you know, we are in the series that knowledge is power. And if you haven't been with us, I'm encourage you to go back and look at some of the uh, previous Bible study classes and go ahead and catch up. Tonight, we are in our KW hl chart and we 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 already went through the k what god wants us to know but now we are in the what do i want to know and what we said was that whatever it is that we want to know whatever the question is can usually fall into the five w's the who what when where and why right we said we weren't going to do the how just yet because that's our next uh category but we want to know who, what, when, where, and why. Why is there so much suffering? Why was the, uh, the earthquake? I saw a video today um, that, that hurt my heart um, because right before the earthquake happened, apparently there was a, a, a canine that went out into the empty streets and he began to howl. And it was almost like he was giving a warning that impending danger was coming. And he was by himself. And some people, you know, they were kind of like, would you shut up, you know? Uh, but he just continued to just, oh, ow, ow. And then shortly thereafter, um, I didn't see him anymore and the, the earthquake happened. I feel like even in these times, especially in these times that uh, the people of God 
uh, his prophets and his mouthpieces, including myself, we are out in the streets saying that, Ooh, <laughs> ooh, there is something coming. There is something impending that is life changing, that is atmosphere shifting. Uh, there, there is something coming, but everybody thinks that we're just making noise. And they're not heeding the warning of his return. Uh, but I'm not going to be uh, guilty. And, and being quiet because nobody wants to hear it. That's okay. I was not uh, assigned to speak only when somebody wants to hear. I was assigned. God called me. He anointed me. He appointed me for such a time as this to speak his word, whether you want to hear it or not. Uh, so I'm going to keep on speaking it. And if somebody catches the warning, catches the, the encouragement, catches uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the next steps, then all I can say is to God be the glory. But I'm going to keep on talking. And so uh, in that, we we want to know uh, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. We started with the why. Because why is one of the most asked questions. Why did it happen? Why was it that person? Why, why, why? But then the next step, uh, the next most asked question after the why, and we said that the why was to fulfill a plan or purpose, to prepare us, to perfect us, to protect us, to prune us and to prosper us. We, we said that that was why. And so one of those categories, why did she have to, you know, uh, why did that happen? Joseph asked that question. You know, he could have asked that question. Why did my brothers hate me so much? Why did they sell me into slavery? Why did Potiphar's wife lie on me? But we understand, and which is what we'll go in tonight, that the why also had a win. Uh, that there was an appointed time, an appointed place, appointed people, appointed posture that he had to be in in order to fulfill the plan and purpose that God had for his life. And not just for his life, but for the lives of his family, for an entire nation and nations. It wasn't just uh, to, to save the children of Israel, even though that was God's intent, but as a result, being connected, just being in the proximity of the Israelites that the Egyptians were also blessed. And so uh, God, God is, he is orchestrating his plan and fulfilling it. And many of us want to know, well, look, it seemed like this thing is taking too long. <laughs> This plan, this this purpose seemed like it's taking forever. When are we going to get to the end of this? When are we going to, when is enough suffering enough? When is the violence going to stop? I want to give you some answers tonight. I want to, and I want you to know right now, I'm not going to give you a, t a, a time. I'm not going to give you a date. I'm not going to give you a year. Uh, you will not catch me proper lying. Okay, uh, that, that's not, <laughs> that's not going to happen tonight. I'm going to give you what God has said so that we understand the when. So after the why is the when, uh, I want to take you first to uh, Ecclesiastes. Please go on, go on, come on over to with me to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And we are beginning at the first verse. That's Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. And what this says, I'm reading this from the um, New King James Version. It says this, it says to everything, to everything, to everything, 
well, what about this? To everything, well, what about violence? To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose, including God's purpose, under heaven. There is a time to be born. There is a time to die. There is a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. That's called harvest time. A time to kill. Somebody was like, what? A time to kill? Oh, when is it time to kill? And a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn. Right, because sometimes we understand that weeping and mourning uh, are not necessarily uh, uh, synonymous at times. Sometimes we weep, but not necessarily because we're mourning. I know I have weeped because I've been in pain. I know I have weeped because I have done something that I've regretted. It's tears of remorse, you know. So there's a weeping time, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Come on, right? Uh, and, and it don't mean drop it like it's hot. Uh, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain. Nobody want to hear this. It's a time to lose. But if it's God's plan and his purpose, according to his will, that loss is really not a loss in the sense that um, you will be uh, uh, uh that that you will be diminished for right a time to lose we lose weight we want to lose some weight i want to lose some weight i'm happy to lose some weight i ain't gonna cry <laughs> if I... <laughs> but we gotta lose sometime right a time to keep and a time to throw away i'm going with this going through this right now with my children uh my son my youngest son he gets his favorites and he gets it from me i ain't gonna even trip i got this hat that i've had for over 30 years okay it is tat in fact give me that hat real quick it is tattered it is it been through the storm and the rain uh but it has made it second cubby and you know some people like well why don't you throw that thing away i ain't throwing it away <laughs> I ain't throwing it away because it has sentimental value from it. Uh, from it. Um, second cubby, right at the top. Uh, my sister gave it to me. In fact, my, the sister who just had a birthday on the 13th. Y'all see this hat? This is one of my favorite hats. Y'all see the fringes on it, right? Somebody trying, they, they be trying to take my hat. I be fighting people to take my hat. I ain't throwing that away, but there is a time. <laughs> To throw some stuff away and maybe not to throw it away uh but to give it away mm -hmm. yeah 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 that size 10 uh that's in your closet and you ain't seen the 10 since the birth of your child and my child is my youngest is 17 and my oldest is 20 so uh yeah yeah there's some stuff in my closet that if I've had it since for that long it yeah it, it just needs to go on and get go on and give it away right and and don't tell me that it's not in style because what we're gonna find out is the times rotate yep 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 the stuff that we thought was uh old right is coming back in style bell bottoms are coming back in style um fanny packs are coming back in style all all of it look let me keep moving right a, a, a time to tear and a time to sew a time to keep silent. That will bless so many people right there. That will bless me. I ain't going to even lie to y'all. A time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. God has a time. And when we ask him when, he gave us the answer right here. And, and 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 we don't like that answer because we as parents we've done that before right we, we we've answered the why and the when the the child asked us why I said because we said so because <laughs> we said because I said so 
But because I said so in the discussion. Well, when? When it's time? <laughs> when I say so. And we as the children of God, uh, our Father in heaven sometimes has to tell us the same thing. Well, God, why? Because I said so. Well, when? When I say so. When it's the right time. Right? And what the right time for us does not mean that it's the right time for everyone. And so we have to understand that there are seasons. And in those seasons, what we find out, uh, not just all of this, but what I really want to get you to understand is that there is seed time, there's wait time, there is fullness of time, and then there's harvest time. Let me give that to you again. There's seed time, okay? There's wait time. There is fullness of time, and then there's harvest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 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 seed time. There's that's the time where we're planting. That's that's one of those time to build, time to gather stones, uh, time to 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 work and not to play. This is the planting stage. And sometimes when we ask God, well, when? And God is saying, when it's planted. Right now, it has to be planted. It has to get together. It has to, you know, uh, what is that? Somebody help me, Pastor E, uh, help me. Uh, the uh, movie that says, if you build it, they will come. Fill the dreams. Thank you. Pastor E is my resident movie expert. Uh, Fill the dreams. If you build it, they will come. But they didn't come until it was built. Some of us are waiting, me included, are waiting for the people. We waiting for them to show up. We waiting for, you know, this spectacular event, but we haven't started building anything. We haven't taken the time to lay the foundation. We haven't put the things, get the plans out, right? The architectural plans and say, okay, the bathroom is going to go here. The children's ministry is going to go here. This, this, and this. We got, there's, there's the seed time, the plant time. And I believe uh, that God right now is planting some of us. And we're like, God, we want to get to the harvest time. We want to get to the harvest time. It's like, you can't get to harvest time if you don't plant anything. Same way that if you, you don't get A's on your test if you ain't studied. There's a time to study. And then there's a time to get that reward of an A or excellence on your test. And right now, some of you, God is saying that you're in the planting season. And it may not be throughout your entire life. It may be in just one area, right? Because our world, our lives are multifaceted. We may be in a planting season. Uh, there, there's a couple that's 50 years old. Uh, the wife is 50. The husband may be 55, 60. They're not in the planting time of their life, but they just decided to get married. So this is a planting time. This is a building time for their marriage. And so we have to understand that our lives are multifaceted. And so God is saying, okay, right here in your ministry, this is seed time. And you got to make sure that you have the right seed in the right ground, in the, you know, in the right soil. And then you have to make sure that the, the, that the, uh, the atmosphere is conducive. I promise you, I'm learning so much stuff from my country husband uh, uh, and, and our endeavors of trying to uh, plant stuff out on our porch. Man, the first year we tried it. Joseph had some cucumbers and had some tomatoes and we had a little cilantro, uh, that we, we stopped for a minute and then we got back to it and I don't think nothing grew this year. <laughs> oh, we had some lettuce and that bolted, it wilted and it was, it was just anyhow. Uh, but we got to know when to plant it, right? Some of us are planting in a season that's too cold. Planting in a place where the, the ground can't sustain it, right? So we are in seed time. Uh, the next time is 
that wait time. I don't know about you. I hate wait times. I hate calling whoever I'm calling. And it's like, please hold. You are the fifth person in line. <laughs> A customer service agent will be with you. I don't like that. Right? During our wait time, we have to ask the question, while we're waiting, are we waiting because we have an appointed time? Mm -hmm. Or are we waiting because we had uh, a self-appointed time, right? Uh, it, it's like going to the doctor and they give you a time. It's like, okay, the doctor can see you at this time. And even though you have an appointment at 10 o'clock, you get there at 9.50, there's still a small, hopefully a short wait time before you can see the doctor. And then there are some people that be like, oh, I need an appointment right now. Well, you can't have an appointment right now, but this is an emergency. Okay, well, I understand it's an emergency, but this doctor can't see you. If that's an urgent matter, and I think every doctor's office you call now, it says, if this is a life-threatening emergency, hang the phone up <laughs> and call 911 or proceed where? To the nearest emergency center. And so some of us are waiting uh, for the appointed time and some of us are waiting for the self-appointed or for the rush time. But either way, at some point, we're going to have to wait. We got to wait in line to buy tickets. We gotta wait if we're out maybe for a stall uh, to, to open up. We have to wait for our plane to come. Then we have to wait for our plane to leave. Then we have to wait for our plane to land. We have to wait till uh, the baby is born and then we have to wait till the baby is older and potty trained. Then we have to wait till they get out of high school. Then we have to wait till they get out of our house. You know, every... <laughs> We are, we, 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 it is inevitable that we will have to wait. But it's what you're doing. What are you doing during your wait time? What is it that you could be doing during your wait time? I want to dare to believe, and I'm guilty as charged, that during the pandemic, that God was giving some of us the wait time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put some seeds in the ground and God gave us a time, a wait time. During the three, two to three years, some of us could have gone back and finished our bachelor's degree. Some of us could have gone and got your GED. Some of us could have uh, gone and gotten a specialized certificate. Some of us could have learned a new language. Some of us could have done some renovations in our house. Some of us could have taken the time uh, to learn a new skill, but God was giving us a wait time so that when it was seed fullness of time and harvest time that we had something of produce. So what are you doing in your wait time? What are you doing in your wait time? Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, for still the vision awaits it's appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If you got an appointment, you got an appointment. Even if they are running behind, even if they are overbooked, of which I ain't going to even tell you is one of my pet peeves. I hate that. Hurry up, get in here, and then wait. Let me tell y'all something, because look, I'm, I'm, I'm petty like this. Can I, can I just tell you? Uh, I had a doctor's appointment one time. And I would get there in time for my appointment. But every time I got there in time for my appointment, I found myself waiting 45 minutes to an hour before I could be seen. And so after this trend continued, I said, well, shoot, if I got to wait 45 minutes to an hour before I can be seen, then I don't need to be busting my tail to get there at 10 o'clock. I get there by 10, 15, 15 minute grace period, then I'm okay. This chickadee had the nerve to ask me, why you late? <laughs> 
and I was very kind. I didn't cuss her out. I did, <laughs> but I very gently inched, you know, pushed her right back on into her space. I said, "And how you doing today? I'm doing well, you know." <laughs> As in, and then I sat there for like another twenty something minutes. I was just like, "That's crazy." right what are you doing in the wait time so what I found myself doing is I will bring a book I will bring my notepad look sometimes I'll scroll on my phone but whatever it is I'm doing something with my time I'm not just sitting there twiddling my thumbs but that I am waiting with purpose, that I am waiting with intentionality. I am waiting and making the most of my time while I'm waiting. The question is, you keep asking when, God is saying, did you plant? And what are you doing during the wait time? Right now you're on hold. I just recently had a call after the whole flight cancellation foolishness with Southwest and I called them and I literally waited on the phone for five hours no I was not awake for those entire <laughs> I was I was somewhere between that REM sleep and one eye open I was I had I'd had the phone on speaker had it on mute so they didn't hear me snoring and all of that you know but five hours and I said, look, I'm not going to stay up, right? I'm going to go to sleep. Because right then, that was what was productive for me. I needed the rest. I was tired. So I made the most of the time. I had that bad fellow on speaker, and I went to sleep. Somewhere, well, not full, deep, slob sleep, but I was somewhere in there. So when it finally answered, I was like, whew, all right. But some of us are in the wait time. But here's what it says. Keep waiting. If God spoke it, if it's appointed, keep waiting. It's going to come to pass. The vision is not a lie. If it seems slow, Habakkuk 2 and 3, if it seems slow, wait for it. Why? Because it will surely come. It will not delay. Some of us miss what God is doing because we don't like to wait. And I say it we. We are a generation or a, a people, we have become a people of a microwave mentality. Stick it in, heat it up, take it out. But some things that's good for some things but those things that are the most nutritional those things that are the most uh, uh, intricate you're not going to get that from a microwave you're going to have to put some stuff in a slow cooker uh, some stuff you're going to have to put in the oven and turn down the heat right I can cook a lot of things but my husband cooks our beef the best because I was trying to cook it fast he's like no baby you got this is a slow and tender <laughs> slow and tender and God is saying wait though it tarries though it seems slow wait for it and while you're waiting Isaiah 40 and 31 tells us but they that wait on the Lord. That word wait is not a time, uh, is not a chronos time. That time, that word wait is a service time. But they that serve the Lord shall renew their strength. Because look, if you just waiting, how, how, what are you being renewed? What has to be renewed if you're literally doing nothing? 
Ah, now that makes sense. They that wait on the Lord. We think this is waiting on the Lord and he's going to renew our strength. No, God is saying still serve. I know you're hurting, but still serve. I, I, I know it's hard, but still serve. You'll find a renewal. I'll give you a renewal. I'll give you energy. I'll give you a new level of peace and understanding and comfort. I'll give you a new level of clarity. But keep waiting, serving the Lord. Because I'm going to renew your strength. You're going to mount up with wings like eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. And you're going to walk and not faint. That was a progress of time. See, the young people, most of them, they, they, they run everywhere. My kids, they was running. They still running. I had to tell them, would you slow down? Stop running up the stairs. Stop running down the stairs. Stop running around the corner. Can y'all just stop running, please? Because y'all run into stuff. Can you please just walk? <laughs> right? But they're not weary. But as time progresses, our, our footsteps get a little slower. They, 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 they get a little more heavy. But even in that, God is renewing. says, they shall walk. They're not running right now. They're walking. I'm in the walking season of my life. You ain't catching me running nowhere right now. I may say I got a run to make, but I tr trust me, I am not running. I am walking very deliberately, very slowly, because I will probably tip over. No, I <laughs> no, I am not a cow, but I tip over. <laughs> I tip over very easily. But I walk with the Lord and not faint. Psalm 27 and 14 tells us, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Why does my heart need to take courage? Because I'm in the wait time. I'm in the hold time. I'm in the I don't know time. I'm in the I don't understand time. I'm in the if you don't hurry up time, some gonna happen time. But he says, take courage. Let your heart take courage. And wait for the Lord. Why? We come back over to Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, we read down to. We read down to verse 8. But if you want. Will you just skip on. Skip on over to verse 11 for me. We're going to do the fast forward. Why? Because he has made everything beautiful in its time. And if we. We are asking when God is saying when it's beautiful, when it's ripe, when it's ready, when the season is right, when the appointed time, the appointed place, the appointed people and the appointed posture line up, then it'll happen. When the appointed time, the appointed place, the appointed people and the appointed posture line up it will take place joseph had a dream he had a vision of the appointed time he had a vision of the appointed time but he didn't understand where the place was going to be he didn't understand the he, he thought it was just his siblings and his parents but he didn't understand that the people was greater that the vision he saw was greater than his immediate circle. He didn't understand that his posture had to be corrected. Because had he gotten to the place with the people at the time and still had a funk attitude, a whole nation would have been destroyed, would have been lost. So when? God, when is it going to happen? It's going to happen when the appointed time. The appointed time when the place is ready. 
right? Some of us have, uh, have the experience of moving into a new place, moving into a new office, moving into um, a, a new job, but it's not ready yet. God had had my husband do a whole, whole, what do you call that? When the plane can't land, they just kind of keep circling. Holding pattern. Thank you. Had a whole holding pattern. Why? Because the place not just wasn't ready, hadn't even been created yet. Some things God is doing in your life is still coming together and if you do your waiting and whoever's responsible for building is doing their job is going to line up and so a position was created because the people that was supposed to be doing their job did their job and while my husband was praying and waiting and saying, God, please get me out of here. Not another day. Was that, was that commercial? Not another day. Not another day. You know, <laughs> the place had to be, it, it had to be made ready. And the people and the posture. God, when will we see justice? I'm going to tell you when the people's hearts are ready. When the people begin to see each other as God saw us and intended us to see them. That Super Bowl ad was powerful. It says God told us to love the people that we hate. Your posture may not be right. A lot of the violence that's going on is because people's hearts are not right we waiting for the legislation and they could do yes they can that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother day yeah they should be building they should be planting they should be getting it together but even if it's gotten together if the people's hearts are not right we can't legislate love we can't legislate what the Bible defined as love. And that's thinking, not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Come on, let's, let's go. This is Bible class, right? Come on. Come on, go with me. Come on over to James. Let's go to James 4. Circling. See, I, I told you I'm impatient in the waiting. <laughs> Let's go to James 4. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, here we go. James 4 asked this question. It says, and I'm reading from uh, the English Standard Version. It says, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? We keep asking God when, and God is saying, when you get right. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. Why people stealing? Because they want something that they can't have. They want something that they're not prepared to, that they haven't planned for, that they haven't worked for. But they want it. So they steal. And then how dare somebody try and stop me? How dare somebody try and check me and tell me that I can't steal something that ain't mine, <laughs> right? That's the whole, that's the whole fight that's going now on the internet with the young man who was 13 years old. 
Why is this 12, 13 year old out at 4 a.m. in the morning? People like, well, he just a kid. He shouldn't have shot him. I don't think that I, I am not condoning the shooting at the same time. I am saying that that 13 year old, that 12, 13 year old boy should have had his tail at home in the bed getting ready for school the next day. Why? When is it going to stop? When you stop lusting for stuff that you can't have or that you're not supposed to have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. And then even after all of that, you coveting stuff. And once you get it, you steal what's missing with, with the procurement of the stuff is the serenity of peace, the having it. Some of y'all been, been, been stalking this boy, stalking this young lady. And once y'all finally get her or him, y'all ain't got no peace. Y'all like, dang, I should have kept moving. <laughs> I should have kept it moving. Some told me to turn away. Some told me that something was the Holy Spirit. And now because... You wanted something that you wasn't supposed to have that wasn't what God designed for you, wasn't what God anointed and appointed for you. Now you want to kill her to get rid of her. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't got to like me. It's in the word. You murder and you covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. You ask foolishly. You ask for some stupid stuff that you may spend it on your pleasure. God, please let me win the lottery. God, I need that $1.356789 billion. What you going to do with it? I'm going to buy some Gucci. I'm going to buy some ba Balajingi. I don't, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Balingia, Balingia. I don't even know what it's called. You know I ain't got it. Uh, I'm going to buy me some Louis Vuitton. I'm going to buy me some Birkin bags. I'm going to buy me some good hair, that good, that good, good hair, that human hair. <laughs> I'm gonna get me a nice crib. I'm gonna go buy me a, a a Porsche, a Maserati. You gonna put some in stocks and savings? Are you gonna open a school? Are you gonna help your community? Are you gonna put some aside for your kids? Are you gonna start a scholarship fund? Are you gonna at least open a CDC so that the community can be blessed? No, they got to get theirs like I got mine. That's why God ain't answered that prayer. God, when you going to let me make it big when your posture is right? So for those that are asking when, when the appointed time, when, when, when it's the right season, when it's the appointed time, when it's the appointed, when the appointed place is ready, when the appointed people are ready, when your appointed posture is ready. I love this. I love this. Let's keep going. It says, uh, excuse me, when will the violence stop? The Lord gave us an answer. He said, if my people who are called by my name, who actually claim that they Christians, who claim that they're disciples, who claim that they're followers. If my people who are called by my name will what? Have the right posture. See, y'all don't want to hear it. But God is answering your question right now. When? When the appointed time, the appointed people, the appointed place, 
the appointed posture. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. We got so many superstars in uh, the, 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 I ain't going to even say the church because everybody in the church ain't by, part of the body. Okay. But we got so many superstars and, and wickedness and foolishness going on. Ain't nobody ever, look. We got pastors talking about, I asked y'all for a jet and it's been several months and I ain't got it yet. You better go on and sit down somewhere and humble yourself. Well, humble themselves and while they're humbling themselves, while they're being humbled, what are you supposed to be doing in your wait time? And pray. If my people were called by my name who carry my name I, I tell my kids all the time you can't go out here and act a fool why because you carry my name I don't care what your little friends do <laughs> you better remember who and whose you are you carry my name with my people when my people not even if when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray what else seek my face not just pray in petition and asking God for a laundry list of what you want, but seek my face, seek my will, seek what it is that I have a purpose and a plan for your life. Seek my face and turn from their own wicked ways. Let's get your posture right. Then, when God, when and then, when God, when and then, then I will hear from heaven. I will deal with first things first. I'm going to forgive their sins. And then I'm going to heal the land. We can see a decrease of, of what's going on in society when we as the appointed people of God, get in the appointed place at the appointed time with the appointed posture. Wait time. And in the fullness of time, what does that mean? The fullness of time is not a specific day. It is not a specific hour. It is not... Um, a certain year or anything the fullness of time simply means when it's ready is dinner ready not yet it will be well how long when it's ready it'll be ready I, I, I will give you a, a range somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes it may be ready but it, it'll be ready when it's ready That apple been on that tree a long time. I should be able to pick it. Nope. Why? Because it's not ready. Many of us are buying. There's some, some fruit that continue to ripen after it's picked. But some of us got some of those fruit things uh, that were picked way too early. And it's bitter. It's hard. And ultimately it's a waste of money. Unless you want it unripe, like for some banana bread or something like that, right? But for banana bread, you actually need fully ripe bananas. That's a whole nother story, right? When it's ready. When I'm not going to get married, God, when you ready. <laughs> and when the person that I got for you is ready. Right now, they still in their mama's basement, you trying to make them commit to you and they haven't even committed to themselves. They haven't committed to getting a job, to being out on their own, to paying their own bills, to not run, come, look, I'm blessing some, y'all need to, I would, I would say that y'all should cash out me, but I ain't even got cash out. <laughs> I'm blessing somebody today, I know it. When you gonna be ready? When you gonna get me a ring? If they, look, They ain't ready. Stop pushing it. And quiet is kept. You may not be ready. 
oh, I'm going to have this wedding, and this and this, and we're going to have our vows to death, to it, in sickness and in health, and good and bad times. Soon as the bad time comes, you can't handle it. Why? Because you didn't get ready. You wasn't time tested, storm tested, uh, 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 quality control assured tested. And as soon as the storm comes, you collapse. Oh, we got to get a divorce for irreconcilable differences. Can I tell you how many times? <laughs> Pastor Ian, I done had some moments where I thought it was irreconcilable differences. Look, y'all need to know that the pastor and I, we love each other. We love each other to life, but we don't always agree. And there were some days where I wanted to take my marbles and leave and go play somewhere else. Since you're not playing the game I want you to play, I'm going to take my marbles and go somewhere else. And I'm sure there were some days where he wanted to take his marbles and go play somewhere else too. And I threatened him. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Right? In the fullness of time. I asked that question when I was pregnant with both of them boogers, especially the first one. Jelani got up in there and stayed. Boy, when you coming? Oh, Jesus, my back is hurting. My neck is hurting. My toes are hurting. Even my nail polish is hurting. Child, when you come? Hey, what you doing up in there? Why you take? <laughs> Look, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. You got to get out. You are more than fullness of time. I got indigestion. I got everything hurting. It. Look, it's fullness of time. You got to go. <laughs> and Jelani said it ain't the fullness of time yet in fact I know it ain't the fullness of time so I ain't gonna even head in that direction I'm gonna turn around and go back up <laughs> I was waiting for the fullness of time I was waiting my poor bladder was waiting. Let me keep going. In the fullness of time, when it's ready, when it's ripe, when your posture is right, then you can pick it. When, then, when is appointed place, appointed time, appointed people, appointed posture. And it's a process. It's, it, it, it keeps going. Seed time, wait time, fullness of time, harvest time. Seed time, wait time, fullness of time, harvest of time. When? When God says so. Why? Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged because in his time, he's making it ready. He's making it beautiful. I'm going to leave you with this Psalms 37. It says, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. Of the man who carries out evil devices. Why? Because God will bring it to pass. Refrain from anger. Don't start fighting. Don't start cussing people out. Keep waiting. Fret not yourself. Verse 8 and 9 says, it only leads to evil. And I know that's right. Because there's been some times where I got tired of waiting. And my tongue wasn't exactly. Yeah. For the evildoers shall cut off, be cut off. But those that wait 
for the Lord shall inherit the land. When? Then. Keep waiting on them. Keep trusting them. Keep trusting. Keep in the meantime doing what you can. Make the most of your time. Be productive. And if by chance God is saying this is a time of healing, I need you to be still, then do that and heal. Some of us can't heal because we don't want to be still. I'm guilty as charged. But whatever season you find yourself in, make sure that it is in the will of God. Amen. I hope that blessed somebody today. I know it blessed me. I stepped all over my own toes because I've been asking where. Amen. You have any questions? Are there any questions? Any questions? Any questions you may have? Any questions? Amen. Well, look. I thank y'all for being with us tonight, uh, as I said, um, and we're going to keep preaching and teaching this lesson, right? Next week, we did the why, we did the when, we're going to do the where. Where, oh where? Y'all going to be shocked. No, y'all won't, because y'all are Bible students. Y'all know y'all word. Amen. I love you. Be careful. Thank you, Sister Hill. Thank you, Sister Hill. To God be the glory. Y'all keep praying. Keep believing. Don't be fooled by this schizophrenic weather. It was almost, I think my car thing said 70 degrees. Y'all see what I got on, right? Right. I dressed for the season. Uh -huh. For the season. The season is still winter. Don't be putting your snuggies up yet. <laughs> right? Dress for the season. Right? All right. Should God say the same? We'll be right back here on next week dealing with the where. Until then, be safe, be blessed, and go with God where he leads and directs. I love you all. Have a good evening. <laughs>